Hello Year One and welcome to your science lesson for today. I hope you're having a really lovely day at home or at school, wherever you are, and you've got your science hats on ready for some learning. So we looked at David Attenborough in our last lesson and we looked at some of those animals that he explores and some of you even drew some. Okay, so today we're going to carry on looking at animals and we're going to look more specifically about what they eat and the names of these animals based on what they eat. So let's share our screen and have a look what we're going to do today. So our learning objective today is how do brilliant scientists identify carnivores? Now, this word carnivores, we looked a little bit at this in our last session. And remember we said they were really big words and we were gonna look at what they mean throughout this week. So today we're just finding out what a carnivore is, okay? So we're gonna have a bit of a warm up and watch a video which will talk about um, what animals eat, how they get their energy sources and the names that are given to these animals. We're then going to do some more research about what carnivals are and what they eat. So remember yesterday we were doing some research so you're going to need those skills again. Then our task is we're going to create a fact sheet about carnivals which I'll go into a bit more detail later. And then we're going to finish off with some nice drawing. So what do you need for today's lesson? Well, you're going to need a pencil. You might want to have some colouring pencils for our task later on, um, but if you don't have any on you, that's absolutely fine. You're going to need a notebook or paper. So if you're at home, you can use your home learning books for this task. And if you're at school, you will use your topic books and a worksheet which I will talk about a bit later. And of course, you're going to need your science brains today. I'm sure you've already got those on. So, our warm up today, what do animals eat? So yesterday we looked at some of those amazing animals David Attenborough works with. Can you remember on that video? We saw dolphins, we saw koala bears. Remember how we saw on that video how he was working um, across in all the ocean, all the oceans, all the rainforests, he even went in the desert. Okay, and we even saw that spider that um, was named after him. Okay, so we looked at lots of different animals, but what do these animals eat? Okay. And what do we call these animals based on what they eat? Let's have a look. So I'm going to stop screen sharing now so I can play the video. And just like before, if your video is a bit glitchy, then you're welcome to um, look this up um, in your own time. What types of foods do animals eat? Animals need to eat so they can stay alive because food is the main source of energy for all animals. Different animals eat different types of food. We can group animals based on the types of food they like to eat. For instance, there are some animals like rabbits, deer or horses that only eat plants. These animals are called herbivores. Herbie, vores. Other animals, such as otters, the tawny owl, and the Scottish wildcat, only eat meat. These animals are called carnivores. Carny vores. There are some animals that eat both meat and plants. These are called omnivores. Omni vores. Foxes, hedgehogs, and badgers are all omnivores. As you can see, even though there are lots of animals in the animal kingdom, we can put them into three different groups based on what they eat. Herbivores eat plants, carnivores eat meat, and omnivores eat plants and meat. Simple.
Okay, so there was lots of information in that video then about um, three types of animals, herbivores, omnivores and carnivores and what they eat. So we're just going to go back to the presentation and talk a bit about them because there was a lot to get our head around there. So the video showed us that animals can be sorted into three groups of diets. We have carnivores, herbivores and omnivores. So carnivores, they mostly eat meat. So they get their energy from eating flesh from other animals. Herbivores eat plants. So this includes the leaves, fruit and seeds from plants. So a really good way to remember what a herbivore is, is by thinking of this word herb, okay? So that could be like the herbs you see in your kitchen that you put in your cooking or herbs you find outside like plants. And then there's this word omnivore. Now omnivore means that animals that eat both plants and meat. So they can get their energy source either way. But we're not going to worry about these two words here today. We're just focusing on carnivores, those meat eaters. What are carnivores and what do they eat? So we're just gonna take a few moments to see what we can remember from the video. Can you remember seeing the carnivores on that video and what they were eating? Okay, how do they get their energy source? So we're just gonna take a few moments. You don't need to call out, this is just thinking time. What can you remember from that video? Okay, so I remember in that video, there was a bird that was pulling a worm out of the soil. And that's an example of a carnival, an animal that is eating another animal, that's eating meat to get their energy. So here's some examples of some other carnivals. We have a lion, we have a shark, a snake and a bat. Okay, and here's some more examples here. We've got lions, so they eat other animals um, in the wild, such as elephants, giraffes, and antelope. We've got barn owls, they eat mice, shrews, and they sometimes eat frogs. Frogs eat other insects like flies and moths. So I'm sure we've all seen those pictures in storybooks of the frogs with their big tongues stuck out, trying to catch flies. We've got a tuna here. Tuna eats other fish, such as mackerel. Okay. And then we've got snakes, and they eat small animals too. Okay, so that's carnivores. So let's look at an example of a carnivore in more detail. So this is our research. We're going to look at a shark. And I thought a shark would be a good idea because we're all very lucky to live near the beach, to live by the ocean. But there aren't any sharks in our oceans near us, okay? But still really interesting to look at what a shark eats. So we're gonna watch a video now. And I would like you to see if you can spot what the shark in the video is eating and how it gets its food. What makes it a carnival? What makes it a meat eater? Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing the screen now to play the next video. And as before, you can look up this video independently if you so wish. So I'm just gonna come on now and play this one. Did you know that the biggest shark that has ever existed was the Megalodon? This gigantic beast had a length of 20 meters and weighed 20 tons. The Megalodon lived nearly 20 million years ago and disappeared 2 million years ago. 
It is considered as one of the most powerful predators of history of the vertebrates. And their favourite prey were sea mammals, such as whales and dolphins. It is a shame that the megalodon has disappeared, but to be honest, it would have been really scary. By the way, did you know that its name originated from Latin and it means big tooth? Did you know that sharks can have thousands and thousands of teeth in their lifetime? Sharks have their denture distributed in layers. When a tooth breaks, immediately it is replaced by the layers above. In general, sharks have between 5 and 15 lines of teeth, although the first line is the most important and it is what they usually eat their prey with. Many scientists have assured us that sharks can have up to 30 million teeth during their lifetime. Did you know that sharks don't stop swimming? Not even for when they need to sleep? This is because of two reasons. The first is because of their breathing. Whilst sharks swim, they maintain their mouth open. This way, the water that contains a lot of oxygen passes through their gills and absorbs the oxygen to be able to breathe. The second reason is that, differently from all fish, sharks don't have a swimming bladder, a kind of internal float that fills with air and allows them to float even though they are still. It sounds weird, but it is true. If a shark stops swimming, it will fall to the bottom of the ocean and drown. Although, the sleeping fish is always eaten by the shark. Okay, let's stop that video then. Okay, so lots of information in that video there. Um, did you manage to spot what um, the shark eats and how it gets its energy source? Did you see how it, even when it slept, it still managed to catch its prey? So. Sharks are carnivores, and we saw a bit on that video. They eat mostly crustaceans. So that's um, sea creatures like crabs or lobster, squid, and they also eat other fish. So with their pointed lower teeth, they can almost crush anything that comes in between. Do you remember seeing on the video then, which showed its bottom teeth, and when a shark's tooth breaks off, it immediately grows back. So they hunt their prey using their sharp teeth, and they never stop swimming. That's what makes them a carnivore, because they only eat other sea creatures. So your task for today is I would like you to choose a carnivore to write about. Okay, so we've looked at lots of examples of carnivore. Remember that bird with the worm? We've looked at a shark. We've looked at lions, barn owls. Okay, so what carnivores can you think of? So I would like you to draw a picture in your topic books. Okay, so if you are at school, your topic book will have a sheet in it just like this. And if you are at home, I would really like you to do something similar. So I would like you to draw um, your own carnival at the top of the page and just pop carnival at the top. And then I would like you to tell me all about your chosen carnival and what it eats, okay? So we looked at sharks and we know they live in the sea and eat other animals because they have very sharp teeth. So on my example here, I've just put a picture of a shark and then I've said sharks eat fish and crabs. They live in the sea and have very sharp teeth. Okay, so let's look at some more examples of carnivores. So we've got our, our owl, our lion. Okay, lots of different 
ideas here. Remember our frog um, with its big long tongue? You might want to draw that. So, more specifically, so some children might want to draw the picture of their carnival in their books and tell me about what to eat. You might want to draw a picture to show me what to eat. So you might want to draw a picture of a shark and then some fish underneath and put um, those words, shark, fish. Most children might want to do the same, draw a picture in their home learning books. Tell me about what your carnivore eats and where it gets its food. Does your animal live in the ocean or the forest, I wonder? And then our red challenge. If you want to challenge yourself a bit more, why not draw more than one carnivore? Tell me about what, where they live, what they eat, and how they get this food. Can you put this into sentences like what I did on the other slide? So I put sharks eat fish and crabs. They live in the sea and have very sharp teeth. So if you fancy a challenge, have a go at putting it into sentences. So when you've finished these posters, these fact files, why not do some more carnival drawings? Can you think of another animal that eats meat? And if you're at home, don't forget to take a picture of your work and send it to your teacher. I'd really like to see some beautiful carnival drawings. And see what you've been learning. Okay? So. This activity should take you about 20 minutes to do your poster. And enjoy it, be really creative with it. I'll stop screen sharing now. And take a picture when you're done. We'd love to see your lovely carnival drawings. So tomorrow's lesson, or the next lesson, we're going to be looking at herbivores. Okay, so we talked a bit about herbivores at the start of this session. And we said that they are animals that only eat plants. Okay, so today we're looking at carnivores that only eat meat. Tomorrow we'll be looking at animals that only eat plants. Okay, so enjoy making your posters and I look forward to seeing all your beautiful work. Goodbye.